hypergrace fallacy exposing second Timothy. In fact, hypergrace fallacy can be exposed by number of New Testament books, and Second Timothy is just another book which exposes hypergrace fallacy. Okay, Second Timothy 2:21. Look at Second Timothy 2:21. Second Timothy 2:21. Okay, therefore, if anyone cleanses himself, you know what hypergrace teachers tell you? Don't go to God and ask for sorry. Because you're already in the righteousness of God. Don't go. But what does the Bible say? You may be the righteousness of God, but when you sin, when you fall away from God, you have to cleanse yourself, which means you go to God and ask for forgiveness. That's not my words. That's the word of Almighty God. You either obey it, you either believe the hypergrace false teachers or the word of God. You have to choose. And then, okay, in other words, uh, next uh, verse 22, 2 Timothy 2 22. Okay. Uh -huh. He will be a vessel for honor. He'll be a vessel for honor. Sanctified. Sanctified. And useful for the master. Useful for the master. Prepared for every good work. Prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lusts lust. and pursue righteousness. Okay, Corinthians says you're the righteousness of God. You may be already the righteousness of God, but still you need to pursue. pursue. You need to chase after. You know, he sang in our local church this morning, May doom to Tahoma. That means we need to seek God, run after God, you know, be hungry after God. Why? It's we may be the righteousness of God, but we need to still. Already, but not yet. You're already the, that's a paradox. Let the paradox not stump you, not confuse you. But we still need to, till our death, till the return of Jesus Christ, we need to pursue righteousness. How do you do that? Flee youthful lust. That means, okay, then I say, like Joseph, run away from the madam who's calling you to sin. You know, when madam calls you to sin, you, you, you run away from her, you leave your shirt and run away. Flee the evil desires of youth. You know, when, when you, in fact, when I preach that, I get criticized by hypergrace false teachers. He said, that, don't, that's not the way to beat temptation. You don't, in fact, we don't need to learn to beat temptation. We are already the righteousness of God. What rubbish. If that's the truth, then why would Paul say, free the evil desires of youth? Why is the directive there? Was Paul wrong? No, Paul was not wrong. You guys are wrong. Hypergrace teachers are wrong. They're wrong. Paul is not wrong. And then chapter, chapter 2, verse 19. Chapter 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands. The solid foundation of God stands. Having the seal. Having the seal. The Lord knows those who are His. The Lord knows those who are His. And let everyone who names the name of Christ. Let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Depart from iniquity. Okay, hypergrace preachers they downplay repentance. So if you say, if you give a testimony, I was drinking, but I don't drink. I was watching porn, but I don't watch porn. I was using abusive language and I don't use abusive language. And if you, if you say that, and uh, yes, uh, uh, there was a time when I, uh, uh, I was addicted to these things, but with God's grace, I'm coming out of it. I, I stumble and fall, but I ask forgiveness and I, and I, I overcome these things, but I, I'm progressing. If you say that, they, they laugh at you. They say, you don't have to do that. You don't have to try all that. You don't. You rest and say, they quote some verse out of context. Take rest, take rest. No. The Bible says, if you name the Lord Jesus, you must turn away from wickedness. wickedness. You must turn away from wickedness. What is wickedness? Adultery. What is wickedness? What is wickedness? What is wickedness? You know what is wickedness. Drunkenness is wickedness. Adultery is wickedness. Porn watching is wickedness. You know, you can go on. So we need to consciously turn away from, if you confess Jesus Christ, we must turn away from wickedness. So this is an anti-hyper grace teaching. Chapter 3 verse 17. Chapter 3 verse 17. Second Timothy 3 verse 17. Okay, chapter 3 verse 16, I meant I already explained that, but it says, or I said, all the scripture is useful for correcting and rebuking as well. And hypergrace teachers don't want a correct and mission, correcting message and rebuking message. We already read that. Chapter 4 verse 10, 1. And this is this is classic. I want you to listen to this one. Chapter 4 verse 1. I charge you 2 Timothy 4 1. Yes, I charge you therefore. Before God. Before God. Paul is giving a charge. Okay. What is this charge? Before God. And the Lord Jesus. And before the Lord Jesus, who will 
Lord Jesus who? Not the Lord Jesus who died on the cross. Okay, he died on the cross. He rose again from the dead and his righteousness covers us from all in you. But the Lord Jesus who? Coming back to judge the living and the dead. Who is going to come back? The living and the dead. Okay, now if I preach to my young people, Jesus, you know, beware when, you, when you're watching porn, beware, Jesus Christ is going to come back like a thief in the night. What kind of websites would have left open when Jesus comes like a thief? They say, no, that's not the way you should teach young people. That's not the right motivation. Then, what is this? What is this? What is 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1? What is the charge Paul is giving? He says, Jesus is going to judge you. Jesus is going to come back. So, what should you do? Verse 2. Preach the word. So preach the word. Jesus is going to come back. There's a day of judgment. So you must preach the word. Preach the word. Be, preach the, be ready in season. Be ready in season. And out of season. Out of season. Convince. Convince. Rebuke. rebuke. Again, there's a word. Rebuke. Exhort. Convince. Rebuke. Exhort. 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 With all long suffering. With and all long suffering and teaching. Teaching. You know why? Because the next verse says, For the time will come. For a time will come. When they will not endure sound doctrine. People will not put up with sound doctrine. And in fact, Bible predicts the coming in of uh, prosperity doctrine and hypergrace doctrine. Because people will not, time will come when people will not endure so sound doctrine. doctrine. It's predicted. I'm not surprised. I'm sad, but I'm not surprised. I'm shedding tears, but I'm not I, I, I'm not I'm not shocked. This is predicted. People will not, instead to suit their own desires, they will gather around them great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. You know what? Uh, itching ears, you know, this is a very soft part of your body. If you are a little baby, you have a, carried a little baby, just try to rub the baby like this. The baby will go to sleep. So that's what, people want such preachers. They want to put you to sleep. I'm telling you, itching ears want to? Yeah. yeah. Be careful, be careful. And then this classic verse, okay. Where, where does it say if you chapter 2? Chapter 2, verse 12. You, you can't get more clearer than this. Okay, anti hyper grace verse. Chapter 2, verse 12. Chapter 2, verse 12. If we endure, if we endure in Jesus. If we abide in Jesus, John 15 imagery, you can put your own imagery. If you endure in Jesus, if you abide in Jesus, what will happen? We should also reign with Jesus. We will reign with Jesus. But, second, second part? If, deny, if you deny Jesus by living in sin and saying bye-bye to him and, and living a sinful life, he will also deny. He will also deny. So, once saved, always saved. If this verse hits it for a Yusuf Patan 6. Or some of the goalkeepers, you know, when time, when it's 95, uh, when it's, uh, let's say the match is going to the extra time, 120 minutes, and they have to score an equalizer. The opposite, the, the, this team has to score an equalizer. The goalie will kick one, kick one from this side, he will kick and the ball will go to the other side. So this, this verse has, hit, has kicked hyper grace for a, such a long distance. Huge. It's like a Yusuf Patan 6, which lands in the crowd. If we disown him, he will. Once saved, always saved is a devilish doctrine. A demonic doctrine. If you believe in it, you will go to hell along with the hyper teachers and their followers. And if some of them are hearing me on YouTube and they choose to reject this message, laugh at this message, they will go to hell and recall this message. I hope that doesn't happen. I, I don't want that to happen. I pray that will not happen. But if they are stubborn, they will recall this message. They will recall 2nd Timothy study, Bible study. On 6th July 2014. They will. They will. So if we endure, he will also reign with him. But if we, if we don't... So, see, uh, Louis Suarez, after biting this, uh, the, 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 the defender uh, of uh, which country? Italy. Italy, Italian defender, you know... He tried to cover it up. He said, tried to say, then he then he understood. He had to say sorry. He, he apologized. Luis Suarez, Uruguayan striker, Diego Maradona called him the most dangerous striker, more dangerous than uh, Neymar and or Brazil, more dangerous than Lionel Messi. And how uh, he didn't play in the World Cup, and uh, because he in, in his in, in his frustration, 
he, he, at that time his team was not leading Italy. The match could have gone anyway, and Italy needed a draw to go through to the second round. Uruguay needed a goal in his frustration. He bit an Italian defender. He he had a long history of doing that. But he he had he said sorry, and that's what the right teaching of scripture is. One John one nine says, "It's not that you will live a perfect life, but if you have sinned, come back to Jesus and say sorry, but and confess your sin and and repent and confess. Say sorry." Us just and forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And you will purify us from all righteousness. Praise the Lord. Okay. Now, hedge.